basically, I'm going to initiate the recording as well and uh, remove okay these uh, blocks that you'll see here. And uh, just to go quickly through a brief explanation of, sorry, I'm going to get you out of the way there, Johan. Sorry about that. Okay, here you go. Now, just a briefly, I want to show you guys just something quick. Uh, if you want to intervene, right, you want to speak up, if you see, I just took a screenshot of what the participants list looks like. You guys should have next to your names uh, something like this, and that goes for you, Johan, as well. You should have this camera here that you can click and take the video away so we don't have to see you. And also the mic uh, icon to the right. If you click on it, you can unmute yourself and speak up. And click on it again just to mute yourselves. And then at the bottom, quickly here, you can see three icons. One that says uh, to raise a hand. So let's say you want and have a question you would like to interrupt. Just click on the hand icon and I can see that you want to intervene and I can unmute you just if uh, by any chance you can't unmute yourself. Also, you have the green check mark here if uh, everything's okay. And uh, if you want to click on the X to let me know something's going on, we can do so as well. All right, so basically that's just a quick look at how the mic camera participants list in the chat works as well. You guys should see below the participants list a quick chat icon here where you can write the text and send either to all participants, as you guys can see here, or click on the drop-down menu here to the right, and you can see and send it only to me privately. I saw that some of you are uh, accustomed to using WebEx, but others are not that much. So just for your information okay uh, Johan we can still see you I, I don't know if I can remove you myself if not, I'm just going to minimize that screen because I'm not sure if everyone else can just see it okay all right so we'll get started everything's rolling I'm recording the session so today is the first session of three I believe you're all part of the uh, freight procurement team and now I'm aware that there's at least three different, let's say, uh, subgroups like the vehicles, the aviation team, and so on. And I know some of you may not be aware of what this training is about. Others may be more aware than I think you are. Some of you have had a chance to uh, test the, the environment, but I doubt those are the ones of you that I logged into this session. So what we're going to do during these three sessions is go through an overview of, let's say, beginning to end, right, end to end process uh, from raising a shopping cart uh, for goods. In this case, it's going to be particularly just vehicles. We're going to see how that generates a number of documents that eventually appear in TM. So we'll see a linkage between SRM and TM in terms of documents uh, that are linked to the PO or linked to the inbound delivery document. We're going to see uh, specifically or basically we're going to be looking a lot more into TM than we're going to be looking at SRM. Okay, I'm not going to teach you guys how to raise a shopping cart, but I want to show you how one uh, is linked to the other. We're going to spend more time in the system in TM, looking through different tabs, different documents, how TM works in terms of tracking, uh, how freight orders are generated, how we can manage uh, transportation, and then also uh, to finalize each session, we'll take a quick look at uh, the um, how to submit events in TM and also how to do so in CCP. Okay, so uh, we'll focus and spend more time on those parts that I believe concern you the most. But I do also suggest that anytime you have a question or you'd like me to go over something or if something is not clear, just click on the hand icon in the participants list. Let me know you want to speak up because this session is uh, created just for you. So whatever we can cover here, uh, the better for you in the long run. Okay, so I'm going to basically now uh, show you uh, this uh, presentation. Okay. Some of you keep uh, requesting to annotate things. I'm just declining uh, those requests because I, I doubt that that's what you want to do. Okay, so we're going to go through this presentation. This one is basically uh, focused on the uh, UN-owned equipment. Tomorrow we'll look at the contingency on equipment, and then on Friday we'll look at troops and uh, how one differs from the other and the types of documents each one of these uh, generates in TM. The first thing we'll do is take a look at this, uh, let's say, mind map of sorts, which will eventually give you a visual. And here, let me just have everything appear on screen at once. We'll give you a visual of uh, what we're going to cover today. 
Okay, basically, and also an understanding, a quick understanding of each step involved in the process and the end-to-end -end process, and where it is that I guess you would come in, or what's more interesting for you in terms of your day-to-day -day, uh, work. So we're starting here to the left, right? The procurement phase for you and owned equipment, and basically the steps that we would follow in SRM, from uh, creating a shopping cart to getting it approved, reviewing and submitting PO, and approving PO for goods. So I have already raised the shopping cart, so we can skip the whole uh, portion of raising it step by step. But I do want to go through some fields in the shopping cart that I consider are key for you to understand later on in TM. Uh, how some information goes from one system to another. Then, uh, basically, how uh, ECC is also linked to SRM, and based on what we've done in terms of creating a shopping cart and approving a PO, how the Emoja system automatically creates the inbound delivery, and how the inbound coordinator would be involved in packing. We won't spend time on that, because I know it doesn't concern you that much, but at least you'll be familiar with the process. And then, eventually, what uh, we'll do is log into TM, and view how the actions that we have performed in SRM and ECC have an impact in TM by generating the following documents, the DTR and the freight units. We'll also become familiar of what these mean or what these acronyms stand for and uh, how important they are and uh, what tabs in TM are important when viewing each one of these documents. From there, we'll take a look at the uh, plan phase uh, the goods vendor stage, the freight forwarder stage, uh, basically taking an a in-depth look to the uh, INCO terms, right, and looking at what happens in TM when we have selected a DAP or an FCA INCO term right from the raising of our shopping cart, what happens when we select uh, XWorks or FCA, right, if let's say the freight forwarder stage, and how the steps differ in TM depending on the INCO term we have selected from the uh, shopping cart each one of the steps as we see here. So we'll go through these one by one as we go into TM because it becomes easier to understand what we're looking at. So I'll be going back and forth from the system back to this PowerPoint, mainly the mind map so we always know where we are. And at any point, you guys can just interrupt me. Okay, so basically, once we have performed the planning stage, which we'll see that for the goods vendor stage, meaning if we have selected the AP or the FCA INCO terms, how the system itself will generate freight orders automatically. And the Umoja system will assign directly the uh, carrier to the FOs, but also that the TM planner, whoever has the TM planner role, could manage these FOs uh, later on if necessary. In the freight forwarder stage, let's say if we select an XWorks INCO term, or also the uh, after the handover location, if we had to add a freight forwarder to the um, to the legs, let's say to the freight orders, we would have how the TM planner would have to select and manually uh, these uh, freight units and generate the best, not generate the proposals, but to select the best proposals in TM. We'll see how Moja automatically calculates this charge estimate, creates the freight forwarders, and then how the TM planner would have to generate the SOW. I believe here is where this becomes a little more interesting uh, to your day-to-day -day work. And this document here, the last one in the planning stage, is where we want to start paying attention to how TM will generate this SOW. And we'll see how we can access this SOW in each one of the uh, freight orders that the system has generated. And how we can also download this SOW and then, of course, attach it to the freight shopping cart that we would be generating in our procure freight stage. Because as of now, we would not add an extra line into the shopping cart for goods. We would have to create a brand new shopping cart, a freight shopping cart, just to, um, to obtain the uh, freight. So and I know in the past, we would add just the freight line to the shopping cart. Now we have to create a shopping cart from scratch just for freight. Okay, basically the process is the same. Create the shopping cart, get it approved, select the shopping cart from the source and cockpit in SRM, create the RFX. The solicitation would occur, and then again, approve the PO for freight, create it and approve it. And here is where uh, the interesting portion comes in for you again in TM how the TM FO manager would assign the carrier and PO to the freight order. So this is basically what we're really going to pay attention to and focus on during the session. And also the portion here at the bottom for um, editing FOs with the new routes, dates, and charges in TM. 
Okay, and then last but not least, the execute and monitor stage that we'll be looking at both in CCP, which is the carrier collaboration portal, the portal that the vendors or freight forwarders would be using to submit events. And then we'll also see how that is done in TM, if by any chance the TM planner or the person with the TM planner role would have to update or upload um, attachments and update events in TM. Okay, so basically this is just a quick look at what we're going to cover today. And again, what we're going to be focusing on the most will be the parts related to TM, because I know that's what's new for you guys and uh, what we want to focus mainly on. And what is really uh, what concerns you the most, which would be the last portion here in the planning section and also the procurement freight uh, section as well. Okay, so... As of now, I'll keep taking a look at the attendee list. Uh, so far, we have uh, the same three attendees as before. Remember, if you want to intervene at any time, you click on the hand, and uh, I can hear a beep in the background, and I'll unmute you. And if you can unmute yourself, just uh, feel free to do so at any point. Okay, so I'm going to move forward in this presentation. Okay, just uh, basically to take a look at the roles involved. So uh, we have the TS-01, Transportation Planner and Execution, and we'll take a quick look at the functions of each one of these. So main function is to create the freight orders to execute a transportation plan. They can also submit events, okay? And in this sense here, we know that uh, this role works for UNOE, COE, and troops. Now, I'm not sure the uh, exact role that will be assigned to you in the sense of uh, to access, uh, if we look back here at the mind map, we'll see at the bottom that if you are the ones who are supposed to be assigning the carrier PO and freight PO and also editing the routes and dates, your role should be the TMFO manager. In the sense, it would be this one here, TS02, freight order management, uh, where we, our main function would be to update freight order stages, dates, actual charges, carrier and freight PO. Okay, if by any chance I'm saying something you're not aware of, uh, let me know as well. But in this case, this would be the role pertaining to what I'm going to teach you guys in the next uh, three WebEx sessions. Okay? You can also submit events. Now, again, I'm just reading out what goes into the role. I'm not telling you what you'll have to do in your job. Okay? That uh, is for somebody else to tell you. But at least for the role itself, the freight order management role, TS02, these would be the main functions. Okay, we also have the TS-03, Display All. So this access is granted to view the documents, DTR, Forwarding Order, Freight Unit, and Freight Order. Then we have the Master Data Maintainer roles, TS-04. The TS-05, that would have access to the Collaboration Portal. Okay, and the TS-07 uh, for uh, TM and EM Reporting Display Analysis. Okay, so we're basically going to be focusing on this second role here. Sorry, I went too fast on that one. TS02. Okay, and the last thing I want to show in this PowerPoint before we start logging into the system are the acronyms. Uh, I know some of you may be familiar with these acronyms, others not that much. Now, of course, uh, SRM, uh, that we're more than familiar with. We have the acronym DTR, which is one of the first ones we're going to be seeing, which is a document that is generated uh, in TM after the uh, inbound delivery document is generated uh, after the PO has been approved, the inbound delivery document is generated, and in TM, automatically the DTR is generated. So it's a document that is sort of a uh, mirror document of the inbound delivery. So it's the delivery-based transportation requirement document. We'll take a look at that one, and we'll have a better understanding of what it is. But this one is generated automatically Okay, once the inbound delivery document is generated. There is another uh, document, the uh, FWO, which is the forwarding order, which is the equivalent to the DTR, but it occurs uh, for COE and troops after we upload the uh, load lists, but we can take a look at that tomorrow and Friday. Today we're going to be focusing on mainly on DTR. Then we have TM, which is transportation management. We'll also take a look at the acronyms for LOA which would be the letter of assist, and how that uh, is, uh, is somewhat a synonym of the INCO terms uh, DAP. Okay, and then we'll see that we have another one, which is the non-LOA, which is the non-letter of assist, which would be equivalent to the XWORKS INCO term. 
CCP, we already saw is the Carrier Collaboration Portal. FU will stand for Freight Unit. We'll take a look at that one as well. This one is also automatically generated with the DTR. Okay, we're familiar with the inbound delivery number, the PO, of course, the shopping cart, and then the finally the SOW or Statement of Work. So basically, we'll become very familiar uh, today with the DTR and the freight units. And also, I realized here we don't have the uh, FOs, which would be the freight orders, which we'll have to either manually generate or we'll see the system generating them depending on the inco terms we have selected in the shopping cart. Okay, so right now as I log in to SRM, just to take a quick look at the shopping cart I raised so that we understand what happens in uh, TM. If you have any questions in the two, three minutes it takes me to log in, now would be the time to do so. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm just logging in now to Moja, which should take me not more than two or three minutes. So at this point still, we have uh, Tamara, we have Johan, and Sao Lao. I guess you guys have no questions so far. Remember, use the chat if you don't want to speak up, and I'll just keep uh, a look every once in a while. Okay, so in this case, I'm logging into the uh, training environment. So at this point, there's really nothing for you to uh, worry about if you don't recognize these screens. Just to take a look at the shopping cart that I raised. Okay, so here I'm going to select this PO, which is um, one of the shopping carts I had already approved. So I went through the entire process because if not, we would waste 90% uh, of our WebEx uh, session just on uh, raising the shopping cart. Okay, just to take a look at uh, basically some of the main fields that I, even though I know this is not the main part of your job, it does help understand what's coming later on in the session. So we basically have a uh, shopping cart here raised with uh, three assets, right? We have a forklift. Now I believe you can all see the cursor in the screen. If by any chance you can't follow me, let me know and uh, I'll just uh, try to amend this. But right now we're here just taking a look at these three lines in the shopping cart, understanding that we have uh, added a forklift, ambulance, and a vehicle. So three assets to the shopping cart. We have selected these three items from the contract catalog. And of course, since they were selected from a uh, contract catalog, they already had the assigned INCO terms uh, to them. So each one of these is going to have a different type of INCO term. And I did that just for the sake of seeing how uh, that would differ in uh, TM and what types of documents are generated in TM because of that. Also, some of the uh, main fields that we want to look at as well, and one of them would be first the uh, delivery date, okay, the one we see here in this column. So basically, when somebody raises a shopping cart, there's a couple of fields that would have to, a couple, maybe three or four fields that have to be uh, filled in and are quite important. One of them would be the delivery date that we see here, of course, knowing when we're going to be receiving 
these items because the INCO term selected for each one of these items or the delivery date added to each one of these items would be the ones generating right, different uh, documents in ECC, so different inbound delivery documents or different uh, DTRs as well as we'll see later on. So as I said, we have one INCO term for line one, a different one for line two, and another different one for line three, and that's going to be generating three different DTR documents in TM. Okay, let's take a quick look at each one of these lines just to see what I, I have added and what is important in each one of these lines. Okay, so right now I'm just looking at the line one here for the forklift and the details under general data just to understand uh, what are the important uh, portions here. Let me just grab something that I can use as a marker. So what I'm looking at here is this section here for service and delivery. Okay, I'm looking at this square. And one of the um, important lines I'm looking at here is the INCO term and location or INCO term slash location. So our first field, in this case, we still have to, or the requisitioner would still have to manually add this INCO term to it, it doesn't automatically appear from the uh, what is already added in the contract catalog. And the same goes for the location. So in this sense, what we're adding here would be the handover location, right? Because it's the one related to the INCO term that we're adding here. We'll see that in TM, once we go in there for this particular line that will generate its own particular DTR document, we'll already have a number of freight orders automatically, uh, actually in this case, sorry, no, we won't have any freight orders generated as we'll have to do it manually. But we understand here that the location will always relate to either the handover location or in this case, since it's an XWorks, would be the final location. Okay, so we're adding the information in these two fields, which are important. And again, the delivery date at the bottom. So right now we have these one and two uh, fields that are quite important for us there. The rest were automatically populated just based on the information of the product ID. So under the general data tab here, the information that I want you guys to remember is the INCO term slash location and the delivery date. Besides that, all other information you should be familiar with. There's really nothing else to uh, look at in that sense. In terms of the account assignment, which we've added before, there's really no further details that I want uh, you guys to focus on. We're quite familiar with these, even though they may not make much sense to you because this is a training environment. So remember, some of these, uh, some of this data is not completely accurate, but it works in the training environment. And the last one I want to show you here is the uh, before the uh, payment related documents here. This would be a nice tab to view here too. We'll see the uh, PO and, and let me shut down my uh, inbox here because the every time I get an email here, it's quite distracting. Okay, and like that, I won't be bothered by that noise anymore. Okay, so again, I'm looking at the um, delivery tab right now. All right, so the delivery address tab here, I cannot view it for some reason, but we I can remember that and tell you guys just from the top of my head. Okay, so again, I'm back at the uh, general data one with where we have the INCO term and delivery date. And then we'll also have the delivery address, which becomes quite important uh, for TM, as we'll see once we add the delivery address, and we can add it uh, usually when we set the values for our um, shopping cart initially. That delivery address that we're writing will be uh, key in TM to understand where the final destination is for these uh, items. So each one of these items could have uh, a different final destination. We just have to select each one of them and let the system know either the INCO term linked to it. So if you see now for the second line item, the ambulance, this is going to be DAP. And the final destination in this case would be uh, the location, which is also unmissed. We'll have a delivery date here. But we don't have the uh, delivery address tab that I wanted to show you guys in this case. But we'll see it in TM. Okay, and the same thing will go for the last item we have here for vehicle. We see that it's a different INCO term and also the location, in this case would be the handover location, not the final destination, and the delivery date that we've added. In this case, I've added the same delivery date to the three of them because each one of them has a different INCO term, and we'll see how it generates its own uh, DTRs. 
Okay, so basically it's 3.30. We're done with the SRM part I wanted to cover. So I just wanted you to see how um, what we add in the shopping cart would influence what we're going to look at now in TM. Okay, so some of the fields that I want you to remember before we jump into uh, TM were these here, the incoterm slash location, and also the delivery address, which would be very important, and we'll see that in TM as well. Okay, so basically three fields that will become quite important when we start looking at TM. Okay, so our SRM portion is over. Let's move into TM now. Just bear with me for a minute or two while I log in. All right, and in the meantime, now would be a good moment to ask uh, questions if you have any. Okay, so again, I'm logging into the training environment for TM. Okay, I'm checking the chat, nothing there. And again, if anyone wants to speak up, now's the time. Just click on their hand or the green check mark or whatever it is you need to click on to uh, call my attention. And I'll take a look at it. So now I'm logging into TM. Again, remember this is the training environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for those documents that are linked to that uh, shopping cart that I was just showing you guys, okay? Now, I know uh, we took a look at it quickly. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the shopping carts, POs, uh, or how much you're interested in seeing that, so I went there uh, quite uh, quickly. But we're going to see now how these shopping cart and PO documents that were generated in SRM are now going to be linked to the documents in TM. Okay, and those documents will be the DTR and the freight unit, which should be automatically generated from that uh, PO approval. Okay, so I'm clicking on launch here. Now, again, in production, you don't have to go through so many different clicks. Basically, this is what TM looks like. Okay, we have our three main tabs here at the top. Now, basically, uh, someone with the TM planner role would eventually go directly into the planning portion uh, to see which uh, freight units have been generated from these uh, approved POs. But I want to show you guys how these tabs work in uh, the field so you become quite familiar with how uh, we can navigate through uh, TM first. Okay, so we have our first uh, tab called ERP Logistic Integration. And under this two sections, one for work list, overview transportation requirements, which is the one we would click on usually to view broadly any documents linked to other documents in another system. So for example, if we want to look at the PO and inbound delivery document that that shopping cart I was showing you before has generated in TM, this is where we would go. We'd click on the overview transportation requirements and we'd see that the fields look a lot like the ones in um, an SRM. Okay, it actually looks exactly the same. And uh, coincidentally, since I was testing this before the WebEx just to save time uh, in loading and searching and typing, the original PO number that shows here is the one we were looking at before. Okay, so we have our original number there. And we also have the documents that have automatically generated based on that. Okay, so let's see. Eventually, I would go into this tab, ERP Logistic Integration. I could write directly my DTR number in this field, but normally you wouldn't have that information yet if you log into TM. What you would have is either your PO or your inbound delivery document, and you would type your PO here in this field called original order. And once you've written that PO, just click on apply, and you would see at the bottom all the documents that are linked to that PO. So in this case, we would have one, two, and three different inbound delivery documents generated from that PO because each one of those lines had a different uh, inquiry term. So again, that is generating three different inbounds. And 
itself is generating three different uh, DTR documents. Okay, and we'll take a look at each one of them and uh, understand the data in each one of them. Now the results, it's worth taking a look at the different columns in these results to see what uh, how much information we have here. For example, also understand some of these columns, like one of them is called life cycle status. And we see some of them are already planned and two others are in planning. Okay, what this means is that um, if we take a look at that DTR document linked to this first line, we'll 100% realize that it, the inquo term is DAP, which means that the system automatically starts generating the FOs and managing the transportation on its own. So basically for any line item in the shopping cart that has the DAP inquo term, TM will do the work for the TM planner. That's why it says the life cycle status is planned. Each freight order is assigned to a vendor already and the system does it automatically. For the other two lines that we have in planning, they're probably going to be the XWorks Inquoterm and the FCA because they will have some legs that are still not yet planned or transportation hasn't even been managed for them. Okay, we have also the column next to it, execution status, and we'll see what that stands for. For all three of them, it hasn't been started. Okay, what this means is that for none of these have we submitted events yet. Okay, meaning that uh, we haven't submitted an event for uh, loading begin or loading end, any expected or unexpected event. Okay, we also have the created column. And if we keep moving over to the right, we'll see uh, details just in this uh, result page linked to the source location, source location address, the destination location, and the address itself. So we see that the three of them pretty much have the same source location and final destination. We also have the uh, shipper information here. Let's just expand on that. And we'll take a look at these uh, once we look at the DTR documents. We have the original order, so we see that they're all linked to the same PO. We have the delivery date, which is July 12. And if we keep moving over to the right, uh, some other details that right now are not that important for you guys to understand, but at least you have a quick look at what the results page looks like and you understand what these documents are and how they're linked to each other and to the ones that we generated in SRM as well. Okay, so we're going to go one by one. I'm going to click on this first one. So this first DTR is linked to this inbound delivery document, which ends in 5.9. I'm going to click on this one. And now the way TM works is every time we click on one of these hyperlinks, it generates a new window. Okay, so all these windows will uh, keep generating every time we click on a different hyperlink that we have here. Okay, now the first one we created, uh, we clicked on, sorry, was this one here. So starting with 11, ending in 340, it's the DTR document. This one, and again, take a look at the top, we have a series of tabs. This tab is the document flow tab. And it's usually the one that appears first once we click on one of those hyperlinks, on one of those documents. Whatever document we've clicked on, the window that opens and loads will be the document leading uh, the other linked documents. So the one that's leading here is the DTR. Below it, we have the inbound delivery. And below that, we have the freight unit document. You see it starts with the 4-1. And below that, we have 1, 2, and 3 freight orders and you can see what it is here to the left it says UNOE vendor delivered freight order they start with six one so in just one tab we have access to one two three four five and six different documents okay and this is just for the document flow tab so what I'm looking at right now is the DTR document that remember was generated once the PO was approved in SRM and of course the inbound delivery document was also generated so they're all linked to each other this one tab shows me all of those uh, linked documents below it we also have the items okay linked to this DTR so in this case this is the ambulance that we're looking at okay and we also have the delivery quantity and other information that has been generated from the uh, PO Let's take a look at some of these tabs here that become uh, quite important, uh, especially for the DTR, the general data tab. Take a quick look at this one. And now one of the first things I want you guys to focus on is here, the inquo term section. 
that we have. I'm just going to put a yellow box around it, and we see the Inquitherm section is the DAP. Okay, so I wasn't wrong in this case. We have the DAP Inquitherm, so you see all the freight orders were automatically generated by the system. So basically, for this type of scenario, DAP Inquitherm scenario, we wouldn't have to do much more in TM, uh, except if by any chance we had to update events and submit events in TM, we would log in as TM planners and submit events. But uh, for these particular cases, we don't have to manage transportation. Okay, all the other details, like the delivery details here at the top, the document type, and let me move this down here. Okay, if the execution status has started or not started, if the life cycle status is planned or not, and other information that has been linked directly from the shopping cart creation. Okay, the business partner tab, if we select that business partner tab, we'll also see uh, just the basic information related to the shipper and consignee. Consignee stands for the mission, so we'll see here that the consignee, again, it's Juba or UN Mission Republic of South Sudan, and the shipper, which in this case is Nissan, okay, so it relates to the vendor itself, okay, and the city linked to it. So basically, the business partner tab will give you information on who the shipper will be and oh, the destination, right, the, the mission in our case. So general data, business partner, we also have the locations and date times, which is also an interesting tab if we want to look at, again, our source location information, the way that TM uh, codifies this Nissan Trading Co. Okay, and the information, how it shows here in source location in TM. The destination location, which is on Miss Juba, in TM it shows as SPSSA6. The addresses, and again at the bottom, the items uh, section that we've uh, is always displayed here at the bottom. If we have some time, I'll show you guys how to edit uh, the look of this window. So you can always have at the bottom uh, whatever you're interested in seeing all the time. So this item section doesn't always have to be here. I can switch this for something else. But in this case, it's the one we selected uh, for this DTR. Okay, and the document flow tab would be these four tabs would be the ones I'm interested in showing you guys for the uh, DTR document. Now let's click on the freight unit to take a look at that one, and uh, then we'll move faster from one to the other so we understand how they all work. We'll also start generating and planning our own transportation. Okay, again, I'll take a quick look at the chat. Uh, nothing there, and nobody has raised a hand, so nobody wants to speak up at this point, so I'm just going to continue. Okay, we'll click on the freight unit. Again, as I said before, we have a new window here generated. Now, this time at the top left, we see that it's related to the freight unit. If you guys look at the screen I have in the back, it's linked to the DTR. So let's maximize this screen. And again, we have similar tabs. Okay, we can have more, less tabs depending on the document that we're looking at. Again, we're back in document flow. And now this time, it's the, D, uh, the freight unit, sorry, that is leading your uh, document, uh, let's say, uh, trace here. We have the DTR right below it. If you look at the top, again, we have some that are similar to the ones we saw before or identical, general data, business partner, document flow, some others that we didn't look at or that have changed from uh, one document to the other. And then at the right, all the way at the right, we have a folder-like icon that if we click on that one, we see a set uh, of uh, tabs. Actually, they're the ones, the same ones that are out here. But after output management, we see we still have three different uh, tabs that we can't see automatically in our first uh, look. Like, for example, map. Right? Let's just click on map and see what that shows us in TM. And hopefully, if it's working fine, you'll be able to see all the legs that were generated in TM in, in, a, in a nice uh, map. I know I was able to see this in the last uh, WebEx session I was delivering. Uh, hopefully, it loads with no errors. Okay, so uh, it says that uh, it's taking a while because of the script it's running. Well, if it doesn't show up, I'll just move on. Oh, there it is. Okay, so basically this uh, tab is interesting because we can visualize the uh, different legs that the system has automatically generated based on the, the master data. So we see from our source location here at the Yokohama port, and if we hover over any of these uh, icons, we can see, see the line turns orange, and we can see 
the location. So one of the first ones would be the Nissan Trading Co. The next one should be related to Oklahoma Port. See, even the freight unit shows on there, the freight unit document. We see um, also our next location here, Mombasa Port, and finally our final destination, which is in Juba. So it's just a very nice feature of TM that uh, allows you to visualize uh, the different legs that have been generated. Let's go back to our document flow tab and move over. We see the general data is uh, pretty much the same as, we, as we've seen in the um, DTR, but we have some other details, like for example, the required capacity and uh, also source and destination location, organizational data as well. Let's go to the business partner, and in this case, now the business partner will also show us again the shipper and consignee, the carrier, and all the information related to that. If we scroll to the uh, right, information related to a uh, person of contact, the, the city, the vendor, the names, the addresses, and so on. The document flow we've seen so far. In this case, we also have the tabs for notes and attachments. And just so you can become familiar with these, notes and attachments are important, but uh, mostly important when we look at the freight orders because uh, the team planners can communicate with the vendors and freight forwarders through these two tabs by adding notes and letting the freight forwarder or vendor know if something is going on or if there's something they need to be aware of. The attachments tabs would work the same way, but in the sense of you would uh, attach any documents that um, you are important that would be missing. And the same thing for the uh, freight forwarder or vendor, they would be able to also attach documents in uh, CCP, the ca Carrier Collaboration Portal, and you'd be able to see them here in TM. Okay, uh, tabs that are important in this document that we didn't really look at in the DTR, it's the status. Okay, here in the freight unit, we can see the status, which is the planning execution status, in this case already planned. Remember I told you guys because of the INCO term DAP, the uh, FO is generated automatically, so the planning and execution has uh, begun. Let's take a look at the execution tab here. Okay, so in this case, we have uh, nothing in this case here. We haven't started submitting events for any of the freight orders, if I'm not mistaken, so that's why we can't see anything here. And then we have our output management tab. But basically, in the freight unit, what uh, would consider to be key is to look at, again, the general data, business partner, document flow. We can also look at notes and attachments, but mainly the status is important. OK, so now that we've seen our freight uh, unit document, just uh, quickly, we had an overview of that. Remember, now we're back to our DTR document. I can close this window as well and go back to the other one, or I can just navigate to each of the freight orders from here. So I'm just going to take a look at this freight order so we understand what the uh, freight order is. I'm clicking on that, and we'll see now the freight order and its tabs. Uh, again, we're 10 more minutes to the hour, so not bad in terms of time. I think it's important to understand these tabs and these documents before we move on. So the freight order, and let me move on to the uh, document flow tab so we're all familiar with what I'm looking at. Again, the freight order represents uh, a leg, let's say, in our transportation proposal. So we're going from point A to point D. The freight orders would be, uh, well, letters B and C, right? So let's say you're traveling from Valencia to New York, but you have two uh, stopovers, one in Madrid and one in Paris, for example. Each freight order would indicate one of these legs, right, and would contain the information of each one of those legs. So in this case, we had three different freight orders. Okay, that's something we can see under the Stages tab here. So if I move over to Stages, it'll tell me exactly what stage this freight order is for. So in this case, we have the source location, Yokohama Port, destination, Mombasa Port. So in that nice map that we saw, we'd see that this would be our second stage, right? So our FO number two, probably the longest distance, right? So this freight order relates to that leg, the one from Yokohama to Mombasa port. And the information related to that stage is right here. Okay, we can also check the uh, business partner tab. Again, same information as we've seen so far, the carrier, 
Nissan, remember the two first ones we could see in the DTR document, shipper and consignee. In this case, now we have a, the carrier line. General data as well. But what becomes very important in this document is to take a look at the notes, in this case, and attachments, because this is where we would be adding notes and attachments related to this freight order specifically. Okay, so whatever things we have to, whatever documents we need to add for this leg, we would do it here. The same thing for the notes. We would also, and we'll see later on, once we have, uh, if this were one of those cases where we're looking for a freight uh, forwarder and we have to edit the charges, we'll take a look at that and how we can go to the tabs for charges and make uh, changes in that as well. One of the tabs that we're interested in here is the execution. Okay, this execution tab relates to those events that are either um, events that were expected or unexpected events, right? For example, loading begin, loading end, departure. So again, in this case, uh, so the plan dates are in the past in this case, so we already have some red lights, meaning we, couldn't, we wouldn't be able to submit these events. If they're submitted by the vendor, they would also be able to, uh, you see them reflected here in the execution tab for each of the freight orders. And you could submit them yourself from uh, TM as well. And then the uh, vendor would be able to see that in the uh, CCP system. Okay, so this tab, execution, shows you the expected and unexpected events for each one of those legs. So all these events, loading, begin, end, departure, and so on, only relate to the leg from Yokohama port to Mombasa port. All right, so I believe in this case, uh, what else we can look at? The tab here for status, just, just to understand if the carrier has been assigned or if the um, events have begun uh, submission. And we have one more tab. Again, remember that folder at the end with the different tabs. If I go all the way to output management, this is the tab, the last one, where I would be able to see that SOW form. Okay, so if I click on that line for SOW and below where it says communication details, action details, document preview, click on document preview and see the SOW document here. Okay, maybe in this case, let's see if it shows up. If not, I can always look at uh, another document. I believe it's just taking a while to load. Okay, if it doesn't show up on this one, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at another document and we can see it there. But basically, this is where you would see the SOW document. We'd be able to um, download it, save a copy, and then attach it to the uh, freight shopping cart, okay, when we're creating the freight shopping cart. So basically, that uh, cuts it out to at least take a look at the documents, understand the tabs. Now let's take a look at that in a little more uh, manual fashion. So let's, uh, we were again looking at our documents, right? DTR documents linked to the inbounds. So we were just uh, really doing a uh, viewing. Now we're going to do some uh, interaction, right? We're going to plan our own transportation so we see how that works in TM instead of just uh, visualizing these documents. So we saw only the first tab and we just clicked on the documents to view them. Okay, we, haven't, we still have two tabs to look at. The next one would be the freight order management tab, which we're going to leave for last because this is the one we would be looking at in order to uh, link the freight PO to our um, the freight PO to our uh, FOs, right? To all the uh, freight orders. Okay, there are so many acronyms that uh, I couldn't remember some of them. Okay, so we'll just leave this last tab for last, and we'll go to planning. Okay, and under planning, we're going to go to the transportation cockpit, which would be where the TM planner would go to select the freight units that haven't, uh, that say would have an XWorks or an FCA inco term, and we would manage the transportation. So in this case, we see the transportation cockpit. We have UNOE DAP, so that's not the one we're interested in. There should be nothing under this line. But for the one with XWorks, we should be able to view a series of freight units that haven't had the transportation proposals managed yet. So I would select this first line and click on Continue. And here you go. Okay, so this is what the transportation cockpit uh, looks like. Let me see if I can get that out of the way. Here you go. So we have basically four windows, 
And the one here to the left where it says freight unit stages is the one that we're mainly interested in. Okay, we have each one of these freight units, see, it has all the information that, uh, that is linked to it. So freight unit, in a sense, is everything that can be transported at once. So uh, that's a very basic way to explain that. So every freight unit represents the uh, any all the items that can be uh, transported at once. So the freight units will be linked to freight orders. So basically, let's say that we can combine some freight units. We see that we have a number of them here. But they're not all the same. See, we have 3-3 three, three here, fine, 3-4, three, 3-9, four, 4-2. Three, four, so we have several of them. And the majority of them have the same loading location and unloading location, so source and destination. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I just had to clear my throat there. And the dates are very similar, too. So in, let's say in this case, we would have freight units that are less than six days apart. So we would be able to combine any of these freight units that are either six days apart or at least six days apart and have the same source and destination location. Those that are further than six days apart, like for example this one here for the uh, 16th, would be way uh, too far to combine with these first, but we would be able to combine these first four. But we're just going to work on um, two of these, right? These 3-3 three, three and 3-3 three, three here that are the same freight unit and see how that works. Now, just so that we remember where we are in our mind map, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint quickly just so that we remember where we are, okay? So basically, remember we had the four columns here. We already took a look at the shopping cart. And actually, that's the wrong one. Let me go here, okay? And this is the one I wanted to show you. So I think I don't even have to put it in presentation mode. This is uh, big enough for you guys to see. So we saw the procure stage. We did the shopping cart. We took a look at it. We saw how that generated the inbound. We, take a, we took a look at the DTR and the freight units. And we moved on to the planning stage. We saw the uh, goods vendor stage for the DAP inco term scenario. We saw how the uh, system had already generated the uh, freight orders. And we also took a look at the different documents and even how a TM planner would manage FOs if we had to, let's say, submit events. So we even skipped over to the last portion really quickly, even though we didn't manually do anything. We at least had a visual of it. What we're doing now is we're doing this uh, part of the mind map here, which is the freight forwarder part. Okay, we're quickly going to go through these stages and then move on to the one related to procurement freight, okay, and specifically this portion here at the bottom. Okay, so we have our freight forwarder stage and the inco terms, and now what we're doing is selecting the freight units in the TM cockpit. Umoja is going to generate the proposals. We're going to select those best proposals. Umoja is going to calculate the charges and estimates, create the FOs, and then we'll generate the SOWs. Okay, so we're going to do all those steps now in TM. I'm going to go back to the presentation. And this is where we are, okay? These are the freight units, and now we're going to be combining to generate the transportation proposals. Okay, so this, these two freight units are the same one, so I can select both of these and select here transportation proposals. And the system should show us uh, all the transportation proposals that it generates. And there it is. Now, just quickly, I'm going to look at the chat. No questions in the chat, and no one has raised their hand yet. I see five attendees, so I believe, uh, I think, Rodion, you joined us. Not sure at what time. But at this point, nobody has any questions before I start selecting best transportation proposals. Nothing up to here. Okay, so I'm just going to move on. <clears throat> Again, remember, interrupt me at any time. So right now I've selected those uh, freight units, which was the one ending in 633. Okay, And we have the transportation proposals that uh, TM generates. If you see here, I can uh, collapse 
these proposals and we can see that each one of these is a different proposal one two three four if we scroll down we can see that we have up to eight different proposals that the system generates we can move to our right and let me just scroll down here and move to our right what we see here is if we go to the top the means of transportation so mainly here in, in the first two it's air UNOE air the second one would be for C and basically just that air and C and the other legs which are shorter we have here truck so basically the means of transportation source destination location when the loading would start we have the distance so we can even filter or sort by distance okay whether it's the ascending or descending right shortest or furthest uh, the duration of the transportation even the cost which would be very interesting to let's say if we're interesting and interested in going from the cheapest to the most expensive transportation proposal we can do that as well so in this case transportation proposal 5 would be the one that the system considers to be the uh, cheapest in this case okay we also have the type of vehicle okay and all other information that we could uh, find uh, useful when before we select our proposal so let's say that what we're looking for is the uh, cheapest in cost so that's transportation proposal 5 it has three stages okay one is a truck the other one is C and then truck so the truck first one would be from the source location to Yokohama port Yokohama port to Mombasa which is the longest and then Mombasa to the mission we would just select this proposal here and accept the planning okay once we do that it'll take us back to the screen we were looking at before and let us know if we see here at the right now we have three different freight orders so each one of these would be one of the legs that we were looking at before we have the three freight orders here and these are the uh, proposals you can scroll to the right to get a little more information on these again remember now we're working on and we're looking at UN owned equipment with XWorks Incoterm we're generating the three freight orders uh, the uh, freight unit is the one here to the left which we see is 41000 okay 633 okay so these are the freight units that we're generating the freight orders for right now we haven't done anything yet it's not until I click on save that these uh, freight orders will be generated automatically okay so I can click on that and the system will say it's okay data saved successfully charge calculation completed and now we have manually generated the uh, freight orders for this freight unit okay we can click on this freight unit automatically this will take us directly to the uh, document itself okay so all I have done now is just click on this hyperlink here and I've gone directly to this um, freight unit okay remember again it didn't go to the document flow remember we can navigate through the folder and I want to see the document flow tab here we see that now we have three freight orders that have been generated and the leading document is the freight unit okay if we go to stages here on the tab I can see from the freight unit and this is where the uh, freight unit also becomes very important the three different stages so so far the ones that the um, system has generated for us let's say in this case are like uh, dummy stages right you'll see that even in the carrier um, portion here I'm going to scroll all the way to the right so we can see this together here the carrier column says Z dummy car because we haven't assigned a freight forwarder yet okay but we do have the stages already um, generated by the system but no real carrier assigned to it yet so under again looking at the freight unit we have the three stages so each one of these is going to be a different freight order we have all the information related to it source location destination for each one of these and the freight orders themselves here for each one of those 
Okay. So basically, we'll see also that we can edit. If we click on this button, we can edit and make changes to our source and destination locations here. Let's say now we're going to, since we already have the SOWs generated, and we're going to see that in two seconds. If uh, once we create our freight shopping cart and that gets, um, let's say, approved, but there's a change in the legs because the freight forwarder uses a different route where maybe there's only two legs instead of three, we're going to have to make changes in TM. And these changes can be made directly here. Okay, so we have our freight unit, and I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to click on one of the freight orders directly from here, and that should uh, load a different page. And I should be looking at the freight order. Very good. Linked to that freight unit. I'm going to click on the folder here to view everything I need to view. But look, uh, coincidentally, I'm in the output management tab. So I'm where I want to be. If I click on the UNOESOW form and click on document preview, as I was trying to do before with the other document, we should be able to see an SOW document. Hopefully, yes. Okay. So this is what the SOW form looks like and how we get to it. Again, we're looking at the freight order document, one of the legs in the freight unit. We went to the output management tab, and we have the document here. This document shows us the PO link to these freight orders, to each of these freight orders, the inbound delivery document linked to this one. So remember at the beginning when we were looking based on the field, um, the field that we were searching for, we added our PO number, we clicked on apply, and we saw that we had different inbound delivery uh, numbers for each one of the uh, DTRs. In this case, the SOW shows you all that information and the three freight orders that are linked to this statement of work. Okay, so we would basically just save this file anywhere we would like to in our um, computer and attach this uh, SOW into the freight shopping cart that we would have to generate now that we need to make changes and uh, link, let's say, the, uh, the new freight forwarder to these freight orders. Okay, so we basically have the uh, PO number here, which is going to be very important for us when we're trying to link things together. Okay, and our inbound delivery document as well. And let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation just to see where we are now. So this would be our, if I can see my mouse here, my mouse is running away from me, and uh, there it is. All right, annotate, maybe like this it'll be better, and here we go. Okay, so we saw this portion, we just saw this portion, and now we just finally did this whole process. Okay, so we have finally generated our SOW. What we're doing now is we're moving over to the freight procurement stage. Okay, went from SRM, went from SRM to ECC. Let me just annotate. So again, remember, from SRM to ECC, ECC to TM, move over here to the planning stage, and now we're doing the procurement freight side. So again, if you haven't asked any questions so far, either it's very clear or you're very busy doing something else, so uh, now is the time to ask the questions before we move on to the freight procurement part because uh, all the documents have been already generated. All we're going to do now is link, and if we see this part here, is going to be to link now the freight PO to the actual uh, freight orders that we have just generated. Now, okay, we're not going to go through the whole process of creating the freight shopping cart. You guys are better at that than I am. So you're very aware of this process. Okay, this is the process that we would have to go through right now. And we would attach our SOW document to this shopping cart. Okay, so we're going to go directly to assigning the carrier and PO to freight order. And we're going to take a look at these uh, routes, dates, and charges. Okay, just a quick look at the chat. Okay, we're listening carefully. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Okay, perfect. And uh, great. Um, let's see. So let's uh, say I already uh, created my freight shopping cart. Everything's uh, approved. Everything's fine. And what I want to do is link uh, my uh, freight PO to these uh, freight orders, correct? Let me get out of this PowerPoint presentation. I've seen enough of that. I'm just going to close all these documents. 
All right. And again, go back to my main screen. Okay, for some reason. Uh, okay, WebEx just likes my PowerPoint presentation. All right, so I'm back here in planning. Remember, we were in the planning tab. We clicked on transportation cockpit to do all the planning, right? The transportation management and all the planning that we just did right now. We saw the ERP logistic integration tab to uh, search for our documents, DTRs, based on our POs. But the one we haven't seen yet is the freight order management tab. Okay, so this is the one we're looking at now. We click on freight order management. And here we go. We have the either overview freight orders or display freight orders. Okay, these are the two that concern us. If I click on display freight order, it'll uh, pretty much load a page with a field saying input your freight order number. But in this case, let's say we don't know it, and this is not really what we want to do. We don't. We can assign a freight forwarder to each one of the freight orders because, of course, according to what I've heard from experts like you guys in uh, New York, is that. Of course, there are perfect scenarios in our training environments. That's why they're trainings. But in real life, scenarios are quite more complex, meaning that uh, there could be a different freight forwarder for each one of the legs. Actually, a freight forwarder could say yes to transportation and then halfway through uh, cancel on you and you would have to go back and do the whole process again. So there are quite some nightmarish scenarios in real life. In this case, uh, we're going to go with a perfect scenario, of course. We're going to click on Overview Freight Orders. We're going to see what this looks like. Again, it's going to look just like uh, SRM with a bunch of uh, fields that we can input information in, okay, and all the results that show up at the bottom. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to search for the... Um, for the PO number that I was uh, that showed up before with the freight orders that I just generated, okay, but that information is not here in these fields. There's a ton of fields here, but of course the one I need is not, right? Let's say we go to change query, and now what this will do is display the same fields as we had before, just with a uh, let's say uh, 10 or 15 more, and in those 10 or 15 more, if I scroll to the bottom we'll see that I have the ones I need, which is the goods PO, which is this one here, or the inbound delivery. Okay, and this again is for UNOE. Okay, tomorrow we're going to be taking a look at the COE and we'll use the MOU reference number instead. Okay, so we already have a, a goods PO number here. It's not the one we were looking at before, but uh, for what concerns us, uh, it, we could use this one or we could use another one. So let's, let's go with the one that I was just uh, working on and see if it works. And 98745, okay, that's the PO that uh, we were looking at before. I'm going to click on Apply. And now we should have a set, uh, and here we go. Okay, we have not only that set of uh, freight orders, but all the other ones too. Uh, I could fix this so it's cleaner, but I'm not, so we can work on what uh, we have here and see how we can manage this as well. Okay, so basically... Just a quick review, I went to the Freight Order Management tab, I selected Overview Freight Orders, I clicked on Change Query, and I added my PO number. I added the PO number that is linked, because that PO number is linked to the inbound, right? That is linked to the freight, um, to the DTR, sorry, that is linked to the freight unit, that is linked to each of the freight orders that I generated in TM. So the PO, let's say, is a... Is, uh, the, the document to rule them all, if we could say something, and these, uh, if we scroll to the uh, right here, let me go all the way to the right, we can see our goods PO here, okay? So in this case, we have the 745 goods PO. So we have tons of different uh, freight orders. So uh, this may have occurred because uh, we've probably used this example a uh, number of times in the training environment. So as you see here, we have the DTRs, tons of different ones right, linked to that. We can always uh, look at the ones that are the latest. But nonetheless, we see that we're looking at the same goods PO. We can see the uh, DTR that we're looking at, the inbound delivery document that we're looking at, and even which ones are the most uh, recent ones. Okay, change by or created on. In this case, the three first ones are the ones I just created today. So that's very useful for me. I can go all the way to the right. And now, Let's say I want to assign the same freight forwarder to the three uh, freight orders because uh, this was just uh, 
one of those good days at work and everything is just perfect right so I select the three lines here and I click on subcontracting okay we have a couple of options well a number of options and one called assigned carrier and SRM for APO okay if I select this one again remember what I did is I selected all three freight orders and now that they're all selected I went to subcontracting assigned carrier and that will display this field here which will show me the uh, carrier that I can add and the freight purchase order now again uh, since SRM is not linked to um, is not integrated right in TM I, I don't have to even create a freight shopping cart to link them two together okay I can just uh, right here for example this one the one that just showed up first and I can or I can even do one two three four five six seven it wouldn't matter because it's the training environment but of course in a real case scenario we would add our freight purchase order number here the real one and we'd add our carrier as well okay so in this sense if we have uh, here we go I know there was one uh, already loaded here before and I'm going to click on this one here which should be the one for Cunin Nagel, which is the one we've been using for all our training. So that should be the correct one. If, let's say, we don't remember the number, of course, TM also allows us to click on the matchbox and begin our search. Okay, so it's not like we need to know it by heart. We can always perform searches by populating these uh, fields. Okay, but since I do know it, I can always add a carrier and freight purchase order here one maybe I'll just change the one to five so it's not the same as for every other freight order in the training environment and I'll click on OK that should tell me that here you go SRMPO document updated charge calculation completed and so on okay so now these three freight orders are now linked to a, the uh, new freight forwarder which should be Kuhn and Nagel so now just to make sure that worked I can click on any of these freight orders. I'm going to click on this first one. Again, that'll display the screen I'm looking at, and we're still quite good on time. Right? We have 15 minutes. So basically what I wanted to show you is uh, what I have showed you. So again, we're in the uh, freight order. I'm uh, looking at the folder here. I'm going to document flow. Again, I like to always start with document flow because it helps understand where you are right okay so document flow will tell me that I'm looking at a freight order that it's linked to this freight unit okay and DTR number inbound delivery number so we have it all here it's kind of more organized now let's go to the freight unit and let's go to the freight unit because as I was explaining before the freight unit uh, encompasses everything together right so we see we have our stages and see now I'm looking at the freight unit the stages tab has the three stages that we generated okay if we remember that and now if everything worked well if I scroll all the way to the right where before it said dummy right the carrier now the carrier itself shows here the number which is referred to Kuhn and Nagel the carrier right that we've assigned so everything worked fine now the carrier is there it's not just a dummy carrier but we have the real one okay and that one is linked to each one of the uh, freight orders here okay so that would be a perfect case scenario if we're just uh, doing that so for example in uh, the power and uh, the PowerPoint presentation what we have done okay the first things one of the first things we have done let me get the annotation so we see was exactly that right we assigned the carrier and PO to freight order now of course we would have to edit routes dates and charges and to do that again we could change the routes directly from the freight unit we could click on edit here and now we would have the um, option see to manually edit destination locations source locations and so on what we can change of course here is the source location destination location but anything in the middle can be changed manually okay or we could simply cancel the freight orders that we have and uh, generate new ones based on what the uh, new uh, legs are from the freight forwarder okay we could always also make changes to the um, to the carriers themselves if we wanted to again uh, reassign them if let's say they're different carriers if let's say um, 
the different legs. If there were too many changes to make, the best option would be to just delete the freight orders and just generate the proposal again and link the uh, the correct freight forwarders to each one of those freight orders um, manually instead of doing it uh, the way I did it, where I assigned three freight orders to the same carrier, we'd do one by one. Okay, so basically this would be where we would uh, easily change the dates also here. See, requested pickup time also can be changed here, date and time, and the locations, okay? And we're looking at the freight unit. So all these can be changed here. And then save, and that would generate the new um, FOs automatically. Right, so that would be just to make changes to the um, destination locations, source locations, and dates and times as well. All right, so that's for that part. Now let's go back to the document flow, because now what I want to do is go into the freight orders. Now let's say that the legs are fine, all right, and now what we do have to change are the uh, charges, right, the rates, because they're not the ones we expected. So manually, we would have to go into these uh, freight orders, look for the tab for charges, as we have here, click on the charges tab, and we see now we have by default, a, uh, charges that have been calculated based on the master data. And we have here our total amount in currency, but again, this is the one that the system has generated. If we click on edit, and we go down to the charge items here, where it says product 10, display that. We say the estimate charges are here, rate 42.11 US dollars, estimated charge. What is the actual charge? We could always go here and make a change here and say, hey, well, you know what, it's 45.11, I mean, just as an example. And click on Enter, and that would automatically make the change here to 3,616, okay, in the calculation. So if we want to make additions to the charges according to uh, the way the system is so far, unless it has uh, changed that much in the past uh, few weeks, months, you would manually have to go in and make the additions to the uh, charges according to the um, to the freight PO that has been approved. And that's how you would do it. You would select the freight order, go to the charges tab, and edit the charges by going to the actual charge tab and clicking on the rates. Okay, we could either do it by rate amount or simply uncheck the rate amount and simply add the, uh, sorry, uh, the ignore calculation route and add manually the total amount if we didn't want to do it by rate. Okay, so basically we've learned how to uh, change, let me just see this uh, as reference, the routes, the dates, and the charges. Okay, so those are the three things I wanted to look at in TM based on the uh, freight PO. And the last thing uh, we would want to take a look at is the event submission. All right, so the execute and monitor stage for the TM planner, we would submit or update events in TM. We saw that quickly. We can take a look at that again. So let's say that we, uh, I'm gonna cancel the change of price here. So, okay, I don't wanna make any changes there. I would go to the execution tab. Remember again, in the freight order. And here's where we would start submitting our events. Okay, so we would have to go to edit. <coughs> and select any of these events that we want to submit. So for example, if loading begin has already begun and you're the one with the role to submit these events, we would have to just say report event and that event would be submitted automatically. If we want to add any information for the uh, event reason, event code, actual event date and time, we would do so here. If we want to add a note to each one of these events, we would do so here as well. Okay, we can't add a note until we've submitted uh, one of the events. Okay, if we want to insert an unexpected event, we just simply go to insert event, and here in the type of event where we have the drop down, we would select the type of event it is. Now, if you realize the minute I said insert event, there's a different type of icon here. That icon is for unexpected event. Expected events will always show as a uh, yellow triangle. Anything we add as an event is going to be automatically considered unexpected event. Now, I know it's a lot of information to uh, 
kind of uh, take in in uh, an hour and a half session or in just a day. But since we're going to go through this tomorrow and Friday as well with a different... Okay, I heard a beep, so I think somebody has a question. Okay, so now I just uh, unmuted you, so if you want to speak up. Hello? Let me check the chat. Maybe you're trying to speak up. Oh, no microphone. Okay, let's see. Okay, yes. All right. I just read your question. So can we see uh, freight forwarder submitted events from here? Uh, yes, exactly. So and we can take a quick look at that as well okay so let's say that the in this case the freight forwarder is submitting events in ccp we would be able to see the submission of events uh, from here directly okay so if by any chance let's say we already have the um we have the po number let me log into the ccp portal and see if we have enough time to at least take a look at what that looks like we're going to try to submit an event and then log in uh, or, or take a quick look again here to um tm and see what that looks like here as well okay so i believe that, that i have hopefully uh, here let me just go to citrix here and i believe i have under my favorites ccp okay all right, so this is what the um, carrier collaboration portal looks like. Now we would have to add here the um, the username, which would be the one related to the uh, freight forwarder that we're selecting. So in this case, I would have to take a look at that one. Just give me one second. Freight order. Okay, just because I didn't take note of that one, but uh, just bear with me one second because I can find it no problem. Uh, or, yes, here we go. I have a better idea. I'm just going to go to my folders. And I know I have one of them here, so... Okay, let's take a look at that for a second and execute. Okay, CCP, here you go. I knew I had one of those users around. And we're back in the collaboration portal. Okay, so let's say I am Kunin Nagel in this case. Hold on. I would log in. And in this case, it's either 7.5 or 7.4. So if this one doesn't work for me, I'll try the next one and they would add their password, one, two, three, submit. They would be able to see uh, anything linked to their, um, let's say, to their uh, site, right? So in CCP, they would be able to see all the freight orders that are waiting to be submitted with events. So in this case, I'm looking at the freight orders. In this case, we have seven, all right? So we'd click on the freight orders for execution. And we should be able to see the last ones that we were working on before. Okay, so we have the freight orders here. So this is what the freight forwarder would be looking at. We would see the freight orders, each one of the legs. If we move over to the right, we can also see the goods PO and the freight PO. Okay, so in this case, it's easy because I, I selected the one ending in five. It's a good thing I changed it so I wouldn't confuse it with this one. Again, remember, these are all training environments. So I'm looking at the freight, the f first three freight POs. I could always go into the first line here, select the one that ends in 28. So I'll remember that for later. And let's click on that one. This will take us to all the information. See, loading begin, loading end, departure. It looks quite different and a, a lot more user friendly than the one in TM. If we take a quick look at it here, let me just uh, view the freight order that we were looking at before hold on if i can find it quickly with the events and uh, sorry for moving uh, quickly through the screens but here you go okay so i'm looking at the two six so i'm going to go back and select the two six one okay these would be the events 
that we're going to look and see if they have changed. I'm going to cancel the changes here so that um, the site is fine. Okay, nothing has been done here. We go back to our carrier collaboration portal, which is this guy. And we select the uh, loading begin, reported time and date. We'll say that it's today, and we'll say that it's uh, right now, even. Okay. <coughs> I'm just minimizing the screen a bit because I can't see the end of this. So we can add our comments here. We can uh, select from the drop down if there were any reasons. The actions here shows it's fine. So just to go quickly through it, we click on update events and this should be able to submit the first event, which is for the loading begin from May 22nd, 2019. So this is how the freight forwarder would be doing it for our first uh, leg, which is to Mombasa. You see at the bottom we have from Unmissed to Juba as well. Loading begin is submitted. So now we would be able to go back to our freight PO. Now nothing has happened here, but if I refresh, we should be able to see. Uh, actually, I, I did it the uh, 28th, right? I didn't do the 26th. Okay. So sorry about that, guys. Let's take the 26th, because if not, I won't be able to see it there. And we'll do the same thing. Okay. We'll select the date here and the time. And we'll do update events. And we'll see that our loading begin should be fine. And now I could go back to TM and click on refresh. And this see, loading begin has changed from yellow to green. And it says reported event. So in a way, this is how CCP would communicate with TM. If uh, by any chance the freight forwarder wants to add a note here, <coughs> for example, is this uh, working? I'm just uh, uh, writing anything so that uh, this works. OK, we would see that. We have the notes that would be able to attach to any of these events. And now if we go back to TM, we'd be able to see this uh, note for is this working here. The same thing with the attachments. Okay, If we were to add any attachments, we'd do it here. They, we would be able to see them if we went back to our TM freight order here and refresh under our notes. We should be able to see something added to either that event or the attachments here under the tabs, OK? So I've added no attachments. And the notes, and also the, um, I was looking at, hold on, the execution tab. OK, I just want to keep an eye on the time, so we're fine on the time. And uh, I think that's as much as I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if there's any more questions there or not, and uh, if there's anything else I wanted to mention here. I know I showed you guys at the beginning that we could add uh, at the bottom a section that would allow us to constantly have a reference to either the items or any other document. In this case, uh, I added document references, so if you guys realize under each one of the tabs, I have a reference to each one of the documents, right? So we see the purchase order, freight PO, transportation request DTR and inbound always at the bottom of my screen. So no matter what tab I'm in, no matter what freight order I'm looking at, I'm always aware of what documents are linked to that in other systems like SRM or ECC. Okay, but basically I think that goes through the process uh, quite quickly. Tomorrow again we'll have a chance to submit events and see how one system talks to the other. Uh, we'll do it for uh, contingency on the equipment, and on Friday we'll do it for troops. All right, so uh, let's leave this uh, these last five, ten minutes for any uh, questions you may have. Okay, thank you, uh, Sal, for uh, asking the question about the uh, freight forwarders and the raised events. Okay, I think that was a good example. And um, checking the chat and any participants, any other questions? I know we're already past the time. But if uh, you guys want to spend another five minutes for Q&A, we can do that as well. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sal, for the comment. OK, nothing, Tamara, Johan, and Brodian. I think uh, besides Sal, you're the uh, ones that are in the session.
Okay, so we were able to go through everything I wanted to cover. In this sense, we took a look at the entire mind map for UN owned equipment. Okay, tomorrow we'll do the same for contingency owned equipment, and Friday the same for troops. Now, I know some stages may uh, feel repetitive for you now if you think, oh, I'm going to learn the same thing. But the more we go through these documents, the more we go through TM and we start playing around with submitting events and uh, changing uh, routes, uh, the more familiar you'll become with the system and the more you'll understand it. I know it's a lot of information for just one day. All right, so if there are no other questions, I'll just, um, okay, nothing. Johan, thank you. So we can close the session. Okay, again, I'm recording. Uh, thank you, Tamara, for uh, confirming as well. This session is being recorded. So uh, by the time you guys get to your office tomorrow, in your inbox, you'll have an email with the link to this video. I'm also going to be sending you the presentation that I've used, even though I've only used the, um, the mind map, because I believe it was better to go into the system and take a look at uh, you know, hands-on in the system what it would look like, because you can always read a PowerPoint in your own time. And uh, that's it. Okay, so if any other questions or anything you would like me to add, you just send me an email and I will gladly respond. All right, so thank you guys and enjoy your day.